The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Mazda. Always the soul of a sports car. Welcome back. Well, well, welcome back, my naughty donkeys. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, my first guest tonight is a country music superstar. He's got a new album, Dwight Sings Buck, which is due out uh, next month. Please welcome my buddy, Dwight Yoakam, everybody. I'm relieved to see they got the correct size album because I heard there was a large scale kind of version of that floating around. Yeah, there's a big. There's a it's big. It's a billboard uh, size thing that they, they hoped you wouldn't. I, I, I can't put a billboard size <laughs> no, thing. No, I know. On. I said. Yeah. I, I saw it earlier and I said that's kind of obnoxious, but I'm glad that you ended up with the correct. Yeah, this is, and I'll put this in my iPod. Well, I don't. I don't know how you do that, did but you, I'll do did it. Did you purchase it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I went out and bought How you this. do it is you buy the record. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I can't afford that kind of money. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just, what is that? Is it like 15 bucks for one of these? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, all right. Yeah. But I'm, worth every penny. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I, I thank you for coming on today. You, you know, it's a, it's a. I never know how to handle uh, September 11th show. Where, where were you? You know, a lot of people have quit handling it, and that's, uh, it's kind of strange. When you, when you, when you called, they asked if I'd come on. Yeah. And uh, we chose a song off of this album, actually, that Buck wrote, uh, and it was uh, sublimely poignant. You know, he yeah. Buck was a very happy guy and always kind of you know, a shrug and a smile, and, and as I was doing this record, I didn't realize the depth of uh, emotions that I would feel and what, what his songs would uh, bring uh, uh, to me emotionally, and that song, when you, when you asked about today, uh, although it doesn't deal with the thing specifically about sure. this, it's yeah, a, it, more it, of a love lament, yeah. but, but, it, but, but it's, it's about remembering, how do you, and that's what how this, do you, this how is do about. How do you remember it? What, what, what well, you, you know, uh, as fate would have it that morning, we had a day off uh, of touring on Monday, September 10th in uh, 2001. I was in uh, Richmond, Virginia on the 9th. The 10th we were off, and we thought, well, we'll spend the day in D.C. So we were in a hotel in Pentagon City. And my mother called and uh, you know, called through to my room. It was early in the morning, and I, and I sleep in. and. and I thought, you know, there's something wrong with the family, and she said, are you watching the news? And I turned the news on, and of course, the first couple of planes had uh, hit the trade centers at that point. And uh, uh, my girlfriend then was at JFK waiting to go out. And so I called her, called my mom back, and as I was speaking to my mother, the window in my room shook from the concussion of the, the, the blast of the aircraft. Flight 77 had struck, and I said, I've... I, I said, I knew I was a quarter mile. I was across the street from the Pentagon. So I said, I, I've got to go. I said, I think they blew up the Pentagon. And didn't know until I got to the window, I could see a trail that, that, it, wasn't, that it was evidently the plane. Right. Um, so it was a strange, surreal, and bizarre experience for me. And, and I didn't find out till later that day, actually early the next morning, that a friend of mine who had directed... Uh, Three of my videos, uh, uh, Ain't That Lonely Yet, which was a big hit for me in 1993, uh, uh, Thousand Miles From Nowhere, I co-directed with her and, and Fast As You, Carolyn Mayer Bugue was on uh, the first flight, I, I think it was the United flight out of Boston that went in to the Trade Center, had lost uh, uh, her life in that and her mother was with her and they had left. You know, it's it's the mundane aspects of what was going on in that day before right. that moment right. that affected me and still still does. She left her uh, two children, her two daughters, uh, for their first semester at the Rhode Island School of Design, and I have never been able to, you know, get that out of my mind that, you know, what had been a, a, a mother and daughter and at that point grandmother experience of, transitioning in life uh, 
was followed by that horrific moment that nobody could have anticipated or expected. And, and it changed all of us. The thing is that I think that what you're doing, Craig, and I said this to you, you know, off, uh, off stage, and why it's important, and it's awkward now to, you know, to and people saying, let's get, get on with our lives. This whole yeah. firefighter this morning who was there in the building and lost a lot of friends saying, yeah, no, I've moved on with my life. And then he stopped. He said, but I can't. I can't really. And we owe it to those those people who lost loved ones directly, I think, to honor uh, their loss with, if nothing else, just bowing our heads and saying, we all remember, we were there, we were alive. In 50 years, uh, there will be several generations of people who weren't alive, you know, at that moment. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 great, the great news is we survived. What you said earlier about our... I think what Colin Powell Colin said Powell is said correct. It. Yeah, I just call people. Is, you know, you know. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> if you're going to steal. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, uh, uh, thank you, General. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think that's I think it's correct, and I think that's what we all should uh, you know we hold and remember is that that uh, we in fact survived and and we will survive it, and, and it's not about who's in power in this country. See, that's what and I, who's in yeah. elected office at any given time. It's about you know, all of us, and, and the, if nothing else, for that few days p after that, when I came back to L.A., it was interesting, you know, flags went up everywhere, and it wasn't about being from a red state or a blue state or being a Democrat or a Republican. It had nothing to do with anything other than our shared pain and our shared sense of loss, and the shared shock and horror and and i think outrage at human beings doing this to innocent people and that's what we're remembering that's what you're allowing the country to remember and, and your audience to remember and thank you for doing so and i think you should be given your citizenship just on the basis of <laughs> <laughs> i just think you want to we're going to take a break we'll be right back to wait you welcome everybody <laughs> Now that was uh, that was you singing with uh, that was you singing with, with Buck, Buck Owens. Owens. Yeah, 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 that yeah, was the, with Buck. I, I hadn't seen that clip in years and years and years. I guess it's out Austin City Limits. We did that I think in 1989 or. or how did you how did you get in touch with Buck Owens? I, I, I drove to Bakersfield, walked down to his radio station, walked in on him in his radio station, and said hi, Buck. <laughs> I was a big fan, uh, mm -hmm. and I had dedicated a song on my second album, Hillbilly Deluxe. I had written a song called Little Ways, and it was an homage to Buck. And the sound of his music, off, off, uh, off uh, air, where I was talking to you about, from about 1962 to 1967, or 68, there was nobody that was better than Buck Owens, I don't think, in country music, and, and uh, the Bakersfield sound, which right. is what California country music was called because Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, prior to them there was a fellow named Tommy Collins and Wynn Stewart who had had hit records out of uh, the Bakersfield area of California. See, I think people have forgotten that Bakersfield had a sound. Oh, it's a huge. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it was the California country music sound. Yeah. Well, well, you know, Bakersfield, you know, it's not like the Glasgow sound. No, no, the Glasgow sound is a very <laughs> different sound. You know, but for, you know, we could sing King of the Road again, but. No, let's not do no, that again. I, I, Amer I, I, America has suffered enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they might ret re uh, retract take the, the citizenship. citizenship. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. might. Re yeah, they <laughs> take it back. But, but what Buck did in that six year period was amazing in terms of the body of work that he created and the sound that he really was doing a uh, a self-contained honky-tonk band the beatles covered buck in 64 ringo sang uh, act naturally which is buck owens hit oh, right. yeah, 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 and yeah. they're gonna put me in the movies you know and it's like and ringo did a great job with that one of the funny introductions ever in show business was ringo on the ed sullivan show you can get this on on, on those dvds that are out uh 
What do you mean? You the can DVDs? pay for them. What, what DVDs? And then you can load them into your iPod. Oh, yeah, that's like. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you get them on the YouTube. The DVDs come through your computer. No, you put them in your iPod. There's a Sullivan series. That, but Ringo leans up and said, now here he is to sing for you, all nervous and out of tune. Ringo, he introduced himself. It was pathetic. Really? But it was great. Yeah, they made Ringo do his own introduction. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... They were moving equipment around. But he sang Act Naturally. And Buck had that kind of impact. I mean, he was playing at the Fillmore West in 1967. And I, because of my band being a self-contained honky-tonk band when I mm -hmm. first started out, and, and still the band that's on this record uh, is the band I was on tour with for the past two years, and they were doing those songs after Buck died with me. And, and uh, he's most remembered now, ironically, for his non-musical persona, which was as a as a comedian on the series Hee Haw, yeah. which was the country version of oh, Lap Dance. I'm familiar with Hee Haw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's many things that I love about these United States. And Hee Haw But Hee Haw ain't one of them. Oh. No, no, no. no. You know, I, you know, I, yeah, I think I we, have, we have your citizenship. So yeah, yeah. I was almost there yeah. and it was snatched away from me. Well, you snatched no, it right no, back. No, Evan. I know. I'm you sorry. Snatched. Well, the hee-haw thing, didn't that, is that the one what where was they, it, they the went... the jaws of victory, you snatched defeat? That's, well, that's my speciality. Okay, yeah. What about the, uh... <laughs> that did, did divorce. You, did you, oh, dear, yeah. Have no, you ever done that? We don't want to go into that. Have you ever done that? No, because I never did the first part. Ah, I, I kept side. I've you you're know, a I've wise been, man. Sir. Well, yeah, you find out you find out when you don't do the first part how angry they're going to be when you get to the second yeah. part because <laughs> right, they yeah. hate you for not well, for not doing anyway. the first part. Yeah, well, yeah. how is that going in your life? I shouldn't by the have way, gone you know? into that. Going, yeah, like, it's going perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything's fine. And well, too, I don't well, know. how are you doing right right now? You're you're not in the first part. Uh, I just I'm fine, thanks. How about you? Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Because I, I noticed you you're find two more evasive guys. Probably <laughs> <laughs> the first part for you is yeah, good right now. Yeah, right? Yeah, everything's good because you're yeah. not in the first part. I'm just saying. And it's not. It's not. So the, no. This is how about, guys actually talk. About, by the way, <laughs> this is like. How you know, I'm all right. It's, if, it's if, that, yeah. if you don't do the first part, you don't have to deal with the ugliness of the second part. Right. Well, well you're a romantic fool. I am. Yeah. No, no, I actually am. That's probably why I haven't. Yeah, yeah. You, would get, you ever well, get, get married? The, would you ever get I married? I thought, <laughs> boy, there are several out there. Some, there. Yeah. You know what? They're all happily married. That's great. See? Not to you. See? Yeah. No. <laughs> what could be better? I'm, I'm trying to remain friends with... No, them. come on. <laughs> You're just still mad because I said I didn't like Hee Haw. I thought it was okay. No, 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 no. I thought no, no. Hee Haw was okay. It's one of these moments. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> no, Hee Haw, but, but, but. I'd never do that again, by the no, way, with ever. the hat. That's <laughs> no, yeah. Unless I do this. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's another whole. That's a whole different thing. Bit of thing. tyrant history, and we don't want to go into we that. We don't want to talk about it. Throw that. the bastards out. No, that's. <laughs> The foundation of this country. I'm oh, just yeah, yeah, I'm trying to catch you back up for your citizenship. Test. I, I, I know. Well, I basically what happened, I think, is that the right British then out. Yeah, the, they, the British would come over. You threw them yeah, out. Yeah, we. Well, you, your folks have done that several. We keep trying. They I keep know, coming I, back. That's I, the problem. Yeah, 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 you forgive them. Yeah. Well, it's not that we forgive them. It's just, there's five million Scottish people. That's it. I know. They're not. Yeah. But it's beautiful. Scotland is one of the most beautiful places on earth. It is. Very it nice really place. is. I except love. It's, except it's raining a lot. All, all of this. Yeah, like, well, the, yeah. I've been actually. I was there last summer, and we were in Glasgow, and and it was just. It was really, really picturesque. It was just you know one of those postcard days. And poured rain the day after we left, poured to the time we got out there, and as they were there, it was great. You know what we call that? American weather. <laughs> so when, the, when the weather like that, we go, oh, it's like America today. You know, when they, when they, <laughs> when they interview you at INS, when yeah. they're doing the interview yeah. for your citizenship. Yeah. Tell them that. that. Yeah. <laughs> I tell them I like Tihon. All right, we got to go. You're going to come back and sing for us, though, aren't okay, you going to say? All right. Dwight, you'll come out and go.